Hey, Dixie, would you do me a favor? Would you write down some of the answers that, that people say when they're... All right, so relentlessly pursuing excellence. We're going to let every table answer and see what's happening. See what you guys came up with. All right, who wants it over here? Who wants to relentlessly pursue excellence for us? Who's got the answer? You have, we have. Who's going to be the spokesman? Let's put that way. Spokesman, here we go. Here we go. Um, we just talked about how to relentlessly pursue excellence means you're always going forward. You're always you're always looking for new ways to reach your students. You're always looking for for new ways to reach them spiritually, mentally, physically. You're always in a forward motion, and you're always encouraging them to be part of that. For them to be pursuing excellence, not because it's for a grade, but because it's what is is in them. It's what they can do and what God has put in them to raise them up to the next level. Wow, oh, good stuff. Man, woo! All right, that was the girls' table, guys. <laughs> That's gonna be a tough one to beat, but go ahead. All right. All right, okay, okay. <laughs> Wow. All right, so what would we do to walk out of here as we think about, as we are going to relentlessly pursue excellence, what would we do? We have to know where we're going, we need to be prepared, we need to be organized in order to get there. Uh, that was our biggest thing, I think, that we talked about, you know, just knowing in advance where we're going, how we're going to go about that when we get to the class, and just understanding the value of the student and seeing them through the eyes of Christ. And, um, you know, one of the theories I have is I ought to be able to take attendance at the end of the day, not that I will, but because I've had an interaction with each student, not that I remember that they were there. Now, I'm at, you know, elementary, you're with them all day, we're only with them an hour, so, okay. Very good. Very well, well, well done. Nice job. Hey, hey, no problem, anytime. Anytime I go. Let me know. All right, guys, here we go. Who wants it? It's all yours. Hey, for me, uh, relentlessly pursuing excellence is to never stop being a student. I want to keep learning more and more about biology, the proofs of God that he created things. Um, it's really a battle in there because so many of our students have grown up in evolution, as have their parents. And one of the greatest notes I ever received from a student at the end of the year was an Asian student gave me this note in May. And he said, I came into this year totally believing in evolution and I was scoffing at everything you were teaching at first, but now I truly believe that God really did make everything again. Amen. Well, that's All right, ladies, who wants it? You got it. <laughs> we focus on the Holy Spirit. We feel that to relentlessly pursue excellence as, as instructors, we need to be Spirit-led, Holy Spirit-led, and Holy Spirit-empowered. Um, we talked about pursuit, that is an action word, and the Bible says to pursue love. And so in order to be uh, the educators we're called to be, we believe that we have to be like Jesus, like this table said, to see people through the eyes of Jesus, through the blood of Jesus, for their potential, not for their, their shortcomings or their mistakes or failures in our classroom, but to always uh, seek the Lord and, and be led by his spirit, empowered by the Holy Spirit. And our vehicle to do that is our faith. Good stuff. Yeah, you guys must be teachers or something. Awesome. Who else we got? All right, here we go. We talked about characteristics that explain how you re relentlessly pursue, like um, everyone being all in from day one, from every student, from the little kids all the way up to big kids, from all of us, including the administrators and every teacher, every staff member, everyone that has a hand on this, on this uh, school. We use characteristics like integrity, teaching the kids what integrity means, consistency, flexibility. Yeah, we all had to laugh at that one uh, thing that we use the most. And looking for opportunities to improve, keeping our standards high, not letting our standards come down, that this is the call to higher standards, and to create a strong school culture that the kids feel they're really a part of. Good stuff. Very good. Thank you so much. Uh, let's see. I don't want you guys. We're going to do more ladies here. All right, who's got it? Who's got it? There we go. It's all you. These ladies all teach very early elementary, and so in this group, I had an opportunity last year to witness them in their um, classrooms, and to me, watching them relentlessly, repeatedly, 
repeatedly, <laughs> repeatedly, not giving up on the little one trying to figure out what does it mean to walk in line. Yes. And they're actually creating the root system that allows all y'all to succeed. Yeah. And I think they've done their excellence. And they've rewarded their kids in multiple ways. And it's not just candy and sweets like I've seen in other places, but acknowledging their strengths, acknowledging the child in uh, affirmations and teaching them that that is rewarding itself for having learned and accomplished. Mm -hmm. wow. That's strong. Good stuff. All right, gentlemen, who's got it? Ball, ball. <laughs> ball. To relentlessly pursue excellence. Um, we talked about attitudes, um, about when you're in those hallways, you have a headache, you really don't feel like doing much or even talking to anybody, but you know, lifting the kids up, high-fiving them, um, things like that. And also to meet kids where they are and to celebrate those accomplishments. So not always looking at, we need them all to be here, but some of them may be way down here, just bringing them up to here is an accomplishment in itself. One heck of a year, I can tell you that much. Good guy. <laughs> awesome. Okay, we talked about collaborating. I work with an amazing team, and I can learn from them and glean from them. And as we talk through things, like we did this morning, we had a meeting for geography, Teresa and Dana and myself, and, and we brought our input and put it together and the bits and pieces came together and made a better thing. So collaboration helps us to pursue that excellence. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. That's awesome. All right, who's got it? Who's got it? Who's got it? Sorry. You act like you don't want to talk. Well, we I have short is strong. I tried to make everybody else. So we talked about a couple different things. We talked about how it really resonated yesterday what you when you talked and you compared it to Olympics and what that meant and how when they get to the end you hear the interviews and they're crying and all the pain, all the time, it was all worth it. Um, and I you talk about a world renowned school and having the opportunity to have visited a school that's considered that. Um, they talk about the amount of time that it takes, and that's a little daunting. When I think about the comparison, what is it gonna take? Um, it's relentless is aggressive, you can't be passive. Um, we all have what it takes. Are we willing to give what it's gonna take? This is some of the discussion that we had. Uh, good stuff, thank you so much. All right, here we go. I think everybody's pretty much all on the same page, and we, we've heard everybody say about the same thing, but um, ours was about being spirit-led um, and how that looks for the teacher and the student. Um, and it looks different for each teacher and each student, and realizing that the way we think is not necessarily the way students think, and the way this teacher thinks is not necessarily the way the other teacher thinks. So we all have an input on all the students, in different ways. Um, relentlessly pursuing consistency through elementary, middle school, and high school. Um, every teacher has authority over every student, keeping them accountable wherever they go in this building. I think sometimes we don't think because the high school's down in elementary, we don't have authority over them, but you definitely do. It's our job to keep them accountable in anywhere they go here on campus. Um, I think another thing is relentlessly pursuing um, that we're all on the same page. Discipline, policies, and procedures from elementary, junior high, and high school. That's, I think, where sometimes we've lacked maybe in the past where we we're not cohesive on that part. Sometimes we don't know where our authority is or where we where our authority ends and where someone else begins. But if they're in our eyesight, we are accountable for them. Um, and very, very, very well done. Thank you so much. All right, guys, last table. Well, we kind of went a different direction because we just did first day of pads and football. 
and first day of pads, it is a cool deal because you get to find out who the men are and who the men aren't, at least right now. And who's, who's, who's willing to get in there mixed up. But we do a drill in football, it's called pursuit drill. And what happens in a pursuit drill is we have a rabbit, we have a guy over here, we get the defensive guys all in their positions. They all have an individual position. And no matter what play is called, everybody's got a position. But wherever that ball goes, and if you hear Coach Cherry, the defense coordinator, all he cares really about is not only you do your job, but then when the ball goes, you go get the ball. You pursue the ball. And it doesn't matter what gets in the way. It doesn't matter how far you have to go. So if the rabbit's over here and you're playing this corner, you got about two steps and you get to touch the guy. But if you're playing this backside corner, you got to go catch him before he gets to the end zone. And we've got fast guys running. So if you're playing this backside corner, you may have to go all the way to the pylon before you catch the guy. But the thing is, if all you're focused on is catching the rabbit, if all you're doing is is worried about pursuing and getting to the goal that you have in front of you, the time, how many steps, you're not thinking about the time, you're not thinking about how many steps to take, all you know is, I gotta get there. All you think about is, I gotta get there. And one of the things he talked about yesterday is passion. The cure for every problem we have in the classroom is we walk in there with passion. <coughs> Discipline is solved with passion. You don't have to know everything because there's nobody in this room that knows everything about their subject. I certainly do not know everything about world history. That is impossible. Too much stuff. But if you go at it like this backside corner, I got to get there. I can't let them score. I got to get there then nothing is going to stop you. Pastor Sharon talked about calling. If we know we're called, then it doesn't matter whether we're playing front side corner, back side corner, I'm getting to the running back. I'm going to get there, and there's nothing that's going to stop me. Period. That's good. Good word. Good word. Man, you guys are awesome. You know, what's fun about this is that you're starting, you can just see, you can sense it. Can, can you not sense the fact that it's like, hey, we're a team. We're working. We're going to go get it. I mean, you know, it's, it's that pregame. You know, it, it, it's that locker room. Everyone's like, okay, we're getting ready. We're getting ready. We're getting, we're getting ready to go get them. You know, and, and I hope you sense that because I do. You know, I sense that everybody's like, let's go. You know, we've got a new, you know, we can make this happen. We can, we can be that person. We can be that school. We can be the, you know, we can be what God wants us to be. You know, yeah, we got some things to do, and we're going to work through that, but we, we can do this. And, and uh, there's a little anticipation, and there's a little excitement, and that, that's awesome. And that's what we want. Uh, that's the desire. You know, we want the passion. We want the drive. We want you to walk in there and say, I want to be an expert in my, in my field. I want, to be, I want to help motivate kids. I want to help them become their best. Now, that sounds good. That's a little tougher in, in, when it comes down to you know, implementation. And we're going to talk about that. That's what Monday's about. Monday's about, okay, rubber meets the road day. All right? It's like pep talk Thursday and Friday. You know, now we got to get out of work. All right? So we're going to start talking real specifically about what does that mean? How do we do that? What does that, what's that, what does that mean for us in the hallway? What does that mean for us in the classroom? What are we going to be looking for in the classroom? How is that going to change the way that we teach? How is that going to change the way that we relate to kids? How is that going to change the way we relate to each other? All of those things we're going to talk about on Monday. So we're going, to, we're, going to, we're going to kind of get after it a little bit on Monday, okay? But I thought Friday might not be the best time to do that. So we're, so we're, going, to, we're going to take this. So let me finish up right here. All right, we're about seven minutes past time. We're almost done. So we talked about becoming relentless and pursuing excellence from a Christ-centered worldview, right? So our mission, here it is. Here's our mission. That was our goal. That's our ultimate goal, right? Our ultimate goal is to become this world-renowned school that relentlessly pursues excellence from a Christ-centered worldview, right? That's, that's our ultimate goal, where spirit-led students are prepared to take on life with confidence and preparedness. That's, the, that's out there, right? So how are we going to do it? We will do this by partnering and I want you to circle that word, partnering with parents, with committed parents and a vibrant church. 
what I'm going to ask you kind of homework for this weekend, and as we kind of get ready to work our way into Monday, all right, think about this. What does it mean to partner with the parent? How can I be a partner with the parent? How can I be a partner with our church? Okay, think about this. Because we, we exist as a school to partner with committed parents and a vibrant church. <coughs> to do what? In an effort to prepare students for greatness. <laughs> so that's the what. Yep. We're partnering to prepare students for greatness. How are we going to do it? Five things. We're going to empower academic excellence. That's what happens in the classroom. That's what happens as we prepare kids for college. As we, you know, just uh, do we have a good academic plan for them? And what is that going to look like? And how are we going to develop it? And where are we going to go? How do we know academically that we're doing our job and that we're doing it well? How do we how do we know if kids are growing? You know, uh, I think it was Paul said, you know, it's like, you know, kids are we get kids at different places, right? Well, if they start here and they get to here, well, that's a celebration. But we need to know that they got to there, right? right? So that we can give a high five. Because a lot of times we're thinking, we think, because this is where we want them, and we think, well, if they're not there, we think, oh, we well, yeah, you know, just know things bad. Oh, what are we going to do? Oh, these kids, you know, forget it. There's no way. He's can't, there's, just forget it. There's no way we can get him there. He just doesn't have the ability to get there. And we just kind of just, eh, just do best you can, kid. It just gets through. Get to the next one. Well, yeah, we're not doing that. Steps. High fives. Great. Hey, we're seeing growth. Mom and dad. Hey, he's working hard. Mom and dad, he's, he's trying. We're making a step. He's doing better. We're getting there. Come on. Come on. Come on. And we just keep pushing and keep pushing them. Get a little step, little step. And when they graduate, hopefully they're 10 more steps ahead than where they start. Right? Empowering academic excellence. That's the first one. Igniting a passion for God's word. That's not just reading Bibles or having chapel and all those kind of things, which are going to be phenomenal, by the way, this year. But it's helping develop a, a, a true passion for God's word. And why is it? Why should it be a big deal to me? Why should the Bible? Why should I, as a student, care that, that the Bible was written? I want them to fall in love with it. Like, this is God's word. This is the truth. This is what you live by. This is how you become successful. We need to help them understand that. We need to help them see that and experience that. So we want to ignite a passion for God's word. We're going we'll we'll to go through what that always means and how we're going to do that later on Monday. Advancing an exceptional environment for talent development. That's a big old long phrase. That just means that our job is to, first of all, help them identify what, how God's gifted them, their talents and abilities, and then resourcing it. That's what it means. If I got an art, then this phrase, advancing an exceptional environment for talent development. So I'm helping them identify it and then resourcing it. So if we've got a phenomenal art student that just loves art, not only do we have to help them realize that the gift that God's given them, but we need to make sure they have all the resources they can to help develop that ability. We have a phenomenal athlete. Not only do we have to help them see that and develop that, learn how to learn how to use that, but we got to make sure we resource that. We got a phenomenal scientist. Then you know what? We need to help them identify that and then help them resource that. We have a famous mathematician in our brain, you know, in our in our midst that we need to. Help them identify that, learn how to use it, and then resource it so that they can develop it. Number four, unleashing a spirit-led life. Unleashing a spirit-led life. And then that's, you know, that's what Pastor Sharon was talking about. <laughs> Just unleashing that spirit-led life. <laughs> How do you hear from God? And then how do you act upon that? Again, experience will do a lot of that. If they see us as a school doing that, and us as individuals doing that, and, and again, that attractive spirituality, the attractiveness of that, 
all of a sudden, that curiosity of the young mind gives us incredible, you know, uh, I guess opportunities that, to talk and to share and to give them that ability, you know, and, and to show them how to do that, right? So unleashing a spirit in my life and then cultivating a servant's heart. Okay, cultivating a servant's heart. We need them to understand that it's not all about them. All right? That we want you to learn how to serve others because right, right the two biggies in the Bible, right? Love God, love others. You gotta make sure you can do both. Okay? And so that's gonna be our job. So those five things, there's five hooks that we're gonna be that we're gonna build our school on. We've got that R12 is our foundation, right? That's the culture. And then we've got five little fence posts that we're going we're to stake in the ground and we're going to say, this is what we're going to do. This is our mission and we're going to do it better than anybody on the face of the earth. Period. Now, we got a lot of things to do to get there. Okay? And we're going to need everybody's input and everybody's mind and everybody's talent and everybody's, you know, ideas. Because, you know, it, it is, it, we are the team. You know, we are the coaches in this process. We are building men and women designed by God to do something great. So our job is to <laughs> talk with our master coach and say, okay, God, help us, help us understand how to better do these things for these kids. So there's two things I'm asking. Number one, it is time to start praying. All right? It is time to start praying for you, that God would just, you know, just empower you this year in a way that you have never been empowered before, that God would give you creativity like he has never given you before, that God would give you an energy that he has never given you before, so that we can do the things that he has placed in front of us that fit in these little five boxes. So what I want you to do is well, over the weekend to start thinking through those. Hey, what would, how can I, as a person, as a teacher, impact each one of those things? Okay? How can I empower academic excellence? How do I, you know, it, 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 create a, a love for God's word? How, how can I help a student identify their gifts and their talents? How can I unleash God's spirit? How can I help them develop a servant's heart? So that's that's the personal part of it. Okay? How can we, as a school, do the same thing. What are some ideas that we as a school can do to help do those things? There's two word, two phrases that I want, and I'm kind of giving you a whole bunch of stuff, and I realize we're just kind of throwing a bunch of stuff at you the last couple of days. But there's two things. High expectations, positive encouragement. Okay? I want our school to, if, if we don't do anything else this year, I mean, if we don't get anything else accomplished this year, when a student walks in this building on August 18th, I want them to know that we have high expectations for them. That we want them to succeed, that we're gonna do everything we can for them to help them succeed, and we will not, will not let them fail. We may let them struggle, but we're not gonna let them fail. That we are here to make you better. We are here for you, it is all we revolve. I mean, and I know a lot ago I said, well, the world doesn't revolve around them. Well, in some way, it kind of does, in our mind. We don't want them to think the world revolves around them. But if, in our world, it does. When they walk in here, our world revolves around the 820-some-odd kids that are going to walk through that door. It is. Our, that's, that, that's our job, is to help each one of them. It kind of goes back to what they were saying over there. I think we're all responsible for 820-some-odd kids, every one of us. And it doesn't matter where you work, what subject you teach. We are all responsible. We are all part of the training program. Okay? And so we all got to get it done. We all have our roles to play, but we're all responsible for them. So, high expectations and then positive encouragement. I, it, there, there should never be a kid who walks this hallway at any hour of the day who doesn't get a high five, hey, how's it going, what's going on, how's, how's life, I mean, to the point that we know what's going on in their life, like, hey, good game last night, hey, great job over there, hey, I heard that you read to those kindergartners, 
Way to go. I'm so proud of you. It is our job to make them feel like they're special. This may be the only place they get that. I don't know. You know, uh, you know we'll see. Even if it's not, it doesn't matter. Because it's our job to say you are important. You are valued. You are valuable. You are a creation of God. And it is my job to make sure that you know that. And that you never forget it. That's our job. High expectations. Positive encouragement. Along with those little five. That fit, that fit that under those five. So R12. Those are two positive encouragement. High expectations. And then our five fence post. Are we start to build a picture yet? Mm -hmm. Kind of start to see it? All right. Not too bad. I only think we're on 15 minutes past where we were scheduled to be. So, uh, again, I appreciate your patience. We're going to do a lot more talking back and forth. I'm not going to talk at you pretty much for the rest of this going forward. We're going to talk together about how to do things going forward. So, um, again, thank you all so much. I am so, I, I can't even tell you how excited I am to start working alongside you guys.